I'm Michael Bain, and welcome to Triggered, coming to you this week, not from the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains, but between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Actually, we're deep in the heart of Texas at FTW Ranch, one of my favorite places in the world. We've got a lot of things to do this week. Spending time with Brett Voorhees, the new president and CEO of Taurus, meeting some old friends, checking out FTW's great class for new hunters, not just hunting and shooting on game, but skinning and cooking game. Great recipes. And I'm finally going to get a chance to take that Bishop 458 SOCOM rifle through all the hoops. It's so cool we need to get started, but first I need to remind you, we are brought to you by Midway USA. Just about everything for shooting, hunting, and the outdoors. Isn't that right? He agrees. FTW Ranch is 12,000 acres of awesome. It is the home of the sportsman all-weather, all-terrain marksmanship program. A program designed to take hunters to that next level in their shooting to make sure that their first shot counts. It's also a place where you can get training in long-range marksmanship from some of the best instructors in the world. However, Tim Fallon, who founded FTW Ranch, realized there was a gaping hole in training. Hunting used to be passed down generationally. Your dad hunted, your granddad taught him, your great-granddad taught your granddad. But with so many people in cities and suburbia, that link has been broken. But interestingly enough, hunting is on the upswing. Many more women coming into hunting, many more people coming from the field to table movement where you know that the only way you can get meat that hasn't been soaked in some sort of weird chemical is if you're willing to hunt it yourself. So FTW set up what amounts to an amazing program. It can take you from soup to nuts. If you're a person who wants to learn hunting or if you're a new hunter who doesn't know what you don't know or if you're somebody like myself or Brett Voorhees from Taurus who just wants to learn more, FTW has the program for you. It will start out with a gun. You can bring your own gun or FTW encourages you to not bring your own gun, to instead use one of theirs so you have an idea of what kind of gun you might need to purchase. You learn marksmanship, you learn ballistics. You learn characteristics of certain animals, say white-tailed deer, most commonly harvested, or boar. And then you actually go hunting and you get that experience of hunting and you have experts there to show you how to take care of the animal in the field, and then how to skin the animal, how to actually break it down, the correct way to butcher an animal so that virtually no protein is lost. One thing that's even more special about this program is you then get to meet with essentially a gourmet chef, an expert on cooking game. In this case, Joshua Schwenke, who is really funny, is really smart, and is really a great, great chef. First, Brett, congratulations on the GX4. Thank you, thank uh, you. That, it's been a big success for you. And I just wanted to ask, how hard a decision was it to make, say, okay, you've got this Millennium line, the P111 line, that has been evolving, and you say, okay, we got we got to go up a notch. We've got to go to a, a new platform. Mm -hmm. How hard a decision was that to make? The company's actually been preparing for this and, and building uh, the systems that we need and the people and uh, the, the resources that we need to be able to take that next step up. You know, in terms of quality uh, innovation, but also just making a, a better, more useful product. And it's, it, 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 they've been preparing for that for the last probably three, three or four years. So um, they were making those evolutions and those improvements in the G line, the G2C up to the G3 and G3C. 
Uh, and that's all been very successful. Those are great guns, great sellers for us. Um, but we really did want to focus in on what, what the market was asking for um, and be able to address those needs better. And so when you look at the GX4, you can see the work that's been put in in, in those smaller details like the, the texture on the grip. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was probably several hours of me and several engineers and um, product designers sitting around a table and analyzing all sorts of different textures. And so putting the hours in, in behind the scenes, um, works. it works out better for you in the long run if you can address some of those needs and, and do, do the product right, which is really what, what I've been tr striving to do since I've got here. Let's talk about your step. You're at Walther, you stepped into Taurus. Uh, Taurus has, has a history of some issues, which means you've got a company that you step into that has a long tail. Sure. And you have to address that tail. How do you do that? I think a lot of it, like I said, was already in motion, but when I was brought in, the focus is, okay, now it's time to start executing on the product side. And, and that's really what my background was at Walther. Um, and really what I'm passionate most about, being being an end user, going and shooting competitions or concealed carrying every day, um, and just being in tune to what the market is, is asking for has put me in a position where I can kind of lead the charge uh, on the product side. So, you know, the, when I when I was interviewing and, and before I took the job, I, I looked behind the curtain and I, I was actually pleasantly surprised or impressed on what, what I saw uh, going on at Taurus. The, the engineering has improved dramatically. The quality control is there now. Um, they know how to make a lot of a lot of guns, which is a great thing. If you go and design a really awesome product, but you can't make enough of them, that's that's a frustration too. So, you know, all those things added up, and it was it was kind of a no-brainer for me to to take on that challenge. I was surprised at something you said earlier that uh, when you add in heritage, that revolver is the or, I'm sorry that that uh, Taurus is the largest manufacturer of revolvers in the world. Yes, that's amazing. You don't really you don't really think about that. Yeah, and we we have a wide product line. So obviously heritage, we make a ton of those guns. So uh, and there's a lot of different flavors there, but they're all single action revolvers, basically mm -hmm. little cowboy uh, replica guns, basically. And so that, that drives the volume up quite a bit. But on the Taurus side, we make everything from small concealed carry pocket guns uh, all the way down in a 380 auto, all the way up to now the, the Raging Hunter in an eight inch barrel with an optic mount and a if, you know, 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. So there's a wide range of product there and, and a lot of different categories that we, that we address. And I think uh, we do a, a good job of covering all the needs for the revolver market. Talk about why you decided to go to 460 and maybe not 500. I know Taurus has done 500s in the past. Yes, and I think 460 uh, from the market research that we were looking at was, was probably the more popular caliber for a hunting, uh, whereas the 500 uh, Magnum might be more of a bear defense, might be, uh, you know, a lot of them are shorter barrel mm -hmm. um, trail type of guns. So we wanted to, to address the hunting side of that first. And, you know, we have made uh, 500s in the past and we probably will again in the future but the 460 was the right the right uh, model at that time and you've done really well with the uh, what the TX22 that that I guess with Jesse and Casey yeah Jesse Harrison Casey Asubio hammering it into a competition 22 yeah the the TX22 was a, a great success from the beginning and you know that gun was designed by our US engineers it's made 100 percent in Bainbridge um, you know, it's, that is made for the U.S. market. Um, and we export very little of them uh, outside of the U.S. So we we're focusing in on on what the consumer in the U.S. wants in a 22, and it took that evolution to the competition model, which has been fantastic. It's been very well received, uh, but it's a very innovative pistol in its own right. Um, the standard model with its 16-round patented magazine design. And then um, you know also how the barrel is not exactly fixed, but it's not a, right, a tilting right. barrel. It makes it for great for a suppressor host. Um, and then the competition model with its optic mounted directly onto the barrel hood. So driving a lot of innovation there, and again, not breaking the bank uh, on the price. Tell me a little about the challenges that COVID gave you. You have here, you have a company in Porto Alegre, Brazil, mm -hmm. and a company in Bainbridge, Georgia, and you might as well be on the opposite sides of the universe. Well, I, 
I, I haven't met with any uh, any leadership from our, our company down in Brazil since my first week on the job. So that's been a, <laughs> an interesting thing over the last 18 months. Um, but, you know, obviously managing, managing your personnel and making sure, number one, we're keeping everyone as safe as we can. Number two, we're still making as many guns as we can because the market is doing what it's doing. And, um, you know, making sure people feel safe and want to come to work and, and enjoy what we're doing and, you know, I think we've done a great job of that uh, and just kind of how I live my life anyways, it didn't really change much for me anyway. So we tried to keep the, keep things as normal as possible inside the building um, and obviously not being able to travel to Brazil, we have to communicate differently. And so coordinating product launches, I wanna make sure the testing is done properly, but I'm not physically there to do it. So uh, having a great relationship with the guys down in Brazil and being able to really dive into test results and looking at what they've done to prepare this gun for production is key because that's where you are going to catch any kind of quality issues that may exist and you want to do that before you launch the market. So a lot of challenges but it's been a, a kind of a fun ride. Well I've seen a couple of the guns that you brought here that are going to be coming out over over the course of the next few months they're very impressive it's like a step up from from what, what people might think of as, as a Taurus gun. That's the direction you're going? Yes, it is. I, I, and it, it's honestly, it's pretty easy to do. We're, we're capable of paying more attention to some of these details. And I, I always say that, but it, that's really all it is. We don't cut corners and we don't accept uh, anything short of, you know, not perfection, but anything short of a, a good high quality uh, product. So um, it's a challenge for, for people and it, it's definitely a change from for some people. but. Overall, the company is embracing it and, and really pushing to do better. So it's really encouraging to, to be able to see that. How do you like Bainbridge? <laughs> I love Bainbridge. I love the, <laughs> the small town feel. Um, really cool little downtown area, great restaurants. So it's it's been great and obviously the community is, has been great to us. So um, it's, been, it's been great. Well, super good to meet you. Good to see yeah. the new guns. And uh, I look forward to getting my hands on them. Thank you. When we come back, it's the Bishop Rifle right here at FTW Ranch. Stay with us. This week's Trigger is brought to you by Midway USA. Just about everything for shooting, hunting, and the outdoors. Taurus USA, designed to protect. Rock Island Arms Corps, solid as a rock. And Franklin Armory making some of the most innovative guns in America. A lot of times I show you on Triggered a brand new gun. We shoot some rounds through it and I tell you, when I get a chance, I do want to ring it out. When I found out I was coming to FTW Ranch this week, I wanted to bring this Bishop 458 SOCOM bolt gun to do exactly that. This gun was built, of course, by Marissa and Diane Bishop in California. It's built on a RIM 700 Action. It's in a Magpul Hunter stock with Magpul magazine furniture here on the bottom. It is their barrel, the Bishop barrel. It is their design on this muzzle brake, and it is a very, very slick gun. What I wanted to do is see how far we could push this gun out. Tim Fallon ran me a range cart out to 300 yards, because that looked like about as far as we could make this puppy go. So we had a lot of different kinds of ammunition, mostly 300 grain from either SB or from Wilson Combat. We did have some old Corbon, 350 grain. So we started working with the gun. It will shoot easily, easily MOA at 100 yards. That's where we sighted it in at 100 yards. We were able to stack four or five shots right on top of each other at 100 yards. And then we went to the longer ranges. Well, basically, I made it all the way out to 350. And Dave, who was one of the instructors here, and he was on the spotting scope, he said you could actually see the round come up out of the spotting scope, way arcing up in the air, and then dropping back in at about a 45 degree angle. But what I found out is number one, this gun shoots great. The muzzle brake works. The gun doesn't recoil particularly at all. And considering we shot more than 100, 150 rounds of 458 SOCOM, that's a good thing. 
Dave said, hey, this is an ideal rifle to have on an ATV. You run into hogs, whatever you run into, it's light, it's fast, and it's powerful. So hey, what do I not like about it? Well, the M-Lock in plastic worries me sometimes for the, maybe able to maybe pull out. This is where we mount the bipod and you can see I put a piece of pick rail here so I could mount the sling. But I wanted to basically carry the gun African style where I'm hanging off of the back of the Magpul stock. So I'm not putting any pressure on that pick rail that's set in the plastic uh, with the M-Locks on it. Using a Leupold V6, uh, 2 to 12, maybe a little bit too much scope for this gun. A 1 to 6, 1 to 8 would probably be ideal. But I enjoyed shooting it. And to me, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. The next goal for this gun, 500, 600 grain bullets. Okay, one of the reasons that I wanted to bring the Bishop 458 SOCOM out here is I haven't really had a chance to shoot it a lot. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to have some spare time at FTW. What I wanted to do was shoot the gun enough to where I had an opinion, of a qualified opinion. So, here's qualified opinion. Number one, the gun shoots amazingly well for a 458 SOCOM. It will do what Marissa Bishop says it'll do. We're shooting here at 100 yards. It's stacking them all in one hole at 100 yards. And that is with SB, 300 grain, uh, Barnes, TTSX bullets in it. So accuracy-wise, it works. The other thing, which is a big, big surprise to everybody, including myself, is it doesn't particularly recoil. And you're going like, no, man, that's a big cartridge. It hits. And in a gas gun, in an AR, it does hit. It's like shooting a 12-gauge. <laughs> shooting out of that rifle with the muzzle brake and I guess the way the, hunter, the Magpul Hunter stock sits, there isn't any recoil with it. So essentially imagine you're shooting a hot loaded 4570, you're not getting any recoil with it. Not crazy about the Magpul stock because it's an M-Lock plastic stock, I cannot keep the M-Lock locked in. If I'm going to keep that stock what I need to do is take it apart and put a piece of steel, a piece of metal in the fore end that I can clamp the bipod to. But I'm glad because I promised Marissa and Diane that I would give the gun a really fair chance and I think it's great. I think it shoots just super and again, I don't feel it, which is wonderful. Okay guys, lots of things that happen here. You're gonna see more and more of these videos. We're gonna sprinkle some of them in as we go forward, but it's been fun. I love FTW Ranch. I love the idea of an introductory hunting class that teaches you everything from soup to nuts. If you've ever wanted to hunt or if you want to just learn more as a hunter and shooter, this is the place to come. I'm Michael Bain. You can find us on michaelbain.tv. You can find us on YouTube. And if you do find us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. We are brought to you by Midway USA. Just about everything for shooting, hunting, and the outdoors. And we will see you next week.